that. Okay. Okay. I want someone to read this. Drug Administration has published a monograph for chocolate manufacturers, which specifies that up to 4% by weight of chocolate may legitimately contain cockroach parts. Since it is apparently impossible to prevent this bug from contaminating the vat in which chocolate is manufactured. Okay. Everyone heard? So. The Food and Drug Administration. What is this? Yeah. The FDA. Food and Drug Administration is the most highly held organization when it comes to food standards. So, Food and Drug Administration. Uh, so, this itself, this organization itself has published a monograph which says that for chocolate manufacturers 4% by weight of chocolate can legitimately so legally permitted is 4% of what cockroach parts. And the following sentence is, since it is apparently impossible to prevent these bugs from con contaminating the vats in which chocolate is manufactured. Okay, so this is from book specifically on chocolate. You can read, pass it around and have a look at it later. So what does this mean? So basically, cocoa is grown in very few regions around the equator are suitable for the growth, uh, optimal growth of cocoa beans. So once the cocoa beans are uh, harvested, they first go through the process of fermentation. They have to be fermented in order to be processed next. So as soon as they are harvested, they undergo the process of fermentation. And we all know when something is fermenting, there is an odor which it emits, which is usually we find it unpleasant. But the same odor is very attractive to cockroaches. So the fermentation of cocoa beans happens initially as soon as they are harvested. And this emits an odor. Some places in order to enhance the process of fermentation, it is heated in vats. So, an optimal temperature of 40-50 degrees when it is maintained, fermentation happens quickly. So, in some places it is also heated in the vats. The containers in which fermentation happens is called a vat. So, in this when the fermentation is happening, the cockroaches get attracted to the cho chocolate, to the cocoa beans and they come and they fall into the vats. So, what did the cocoa manufacturers do? They said that it has become impossible to separate all these cockroaches which are going and falling into the vats. So, we are finding it very difficult. So, they gave an application to the FDA to say that please set a value which is permissible for us to sell it along with the cockroach parts because we cannot... Uh, it is very difficult and it's become almost impossible to separate it from the cocoa and prevent them because the smell is so much that they are automatically attracted. So we are not able to prevent and we are not able to separate it. So just give us one value which we have to follow the standards which will become permissible. So after inspecting and finding out that it is true that cockroaches are coming and it's difficult to separate, 4% was set as the legally allowed standard. So, we all know how much 
we are flexible and how much we bend the rules according to our convenience but as such 4% is legally involved uh, allowed so how much is a cockroach does a cockroach usually weigh it's very light right so 4% by weight is almost equivalent to 16 cockroaches so if you are eating a bar of 100 grams of chocolate you may be consuming 16 cockroaches in that small bar legally allowed okay so this is something which we don't like of course so some people say okay I, I'm a non-vegetarian, I eat uh, this, I eat that, so what is wrong, some cockroach parts is going in any way, it doesn't, it tastes good, so it, how does it matter, that is what many people whom, who are reluctant to quit chocolate say. So actually the problem is that cockroach parts are known to be causing allergies in children, there are a lot of children who are allergic to chocolate but what is it in chocolate which is causing the allergy is the cockroach parts present in them it is uh, medically known that if you are sitting in a place surrounded by cockroach for a long time your lungs start to get become weak you have breathing problems a major cause of asthma in the cities now is not just the pollution we're all thinking only about the pollution but we're forgetting about what we are eating it is the cockroach parts which we are giving kids right from the early age of six months earlier when teething used to happen parents would give uh, carrot peas or some vegetable hard vegetable so that the kid would keep chewing on it to re reduce the irritation now what do we give them we have the plastic feeds or we have biscuits and chocolates ready to give the children to pacify parents don't have the patience to pacify the kid if he is making a fuss so just give him a chocolate he'll be silent you can continue with your work so we tend to blame the children but it is not their fault it is we who are putting them into these habits and we who are leading we have to lead by example for the kids they follow what we do so it's easy to say my kid does not eat millets it's easy to say my kid will not stop eating chocolates but it is what you do which they tend to follow so this was a small bit on chocolates it is after this process of fermentation that the chocolate is then the cocoa beans are roasted and after the roasting cocoa is extracted so this is happening in the very first step Many parents said, okay, I don't want to give my child chocolate, so can I give cocoa powder in milk or in some other form? So even that will have this because the cockroach entering into it is at the first step itself. Later is the extraction and making it into different forms, colors and adding different flavors and giving it all different names. That is all later. So this is happening in the very first step itself. Okay. So, what we have spoken from morning, just to have a quick recap, is that we are in a bad state right now. We spoke about big, big diseases like hypertension, cancer, sugar, diabetes and cholesterol. But also, the small, small things which a animal, a human being is an animal, should do on a daily basis. Can we list these? Basic. What does every animal have an innate tendency to do? Eat. Eat. Yes. Yes. Yeah, locomotion that is for human beings it is walking.
basic of any living organism. Anything else? Yeah, okay. Eat and drink, we will include that under 1. I think we still are not in a state where we are finding it difficult to drink, so I am not writing that here. Breathing, there are many people who are dependent on the puff without which they are unable to <coughs> breathe comfortably on a daily basis. There are many people who are having to use the puff at least 3 times a day in order to have regular activities, not even hard physical activity, just for having a normal activity they need the puff. To eat, most of people uh, are after 35, 40, many of them have now become dependent on gastric tablets. Without the tablet, they do not feel hungry or if they eat without taking the tablet, they do not digest the food properly. Sleep, doing nothing, just resting itself has become difficult. We are just, as soon as we lie down, rest, we are supposed to go into a state of sleep where the brain takes rest. But even that has become difficult. So many people are addicted to sleeping tablets to get sleep or many people have not reached that stage but we sleep but when we get up we do not feel refreshed. We feel we want to sleep more. We keep snoozing the alarm and continue to sleep or we are forced to get up and we are carrying out our activities in the day, we are supposed to be alert, active, we feel drowsy. So sleep, not sleeping when we are supposed to sleep and getting sleep when we are supposed to be active. Locomotion, walking, by the age of 40, 45, knee replacement surgeries have become so common. We are not able to support ourselves on what God has given us, we are having to depend on the artificially made joints replace the given joints and walk by the age of 40, 45. Earlier, they used to walk 18 kilometers a day and yet at the age of 90, they would still be in a state to walk. Now, we hardly walk. We are not using our given structure to do what we are supposed to do. Yet, by the age of 40, 45, we are not able to move properly. And then when we approach the doctor, the doctor says their joints are withering away, so do not walk. How is a simple logic when we think that though they used to walk 18 kilometers, their joints were fine. So we have to understand by that, that it is not because of walking which the joints are becoming, what, what can you say, things are going wrong in the joints. It is because of not giving the correct nutrients to our bones that we are becoming weak in this way. Elimination. So, a bigger problem than any of all, all these diseases which we spoke about is constipation. Dalcolax is the maximum earning drug in the pharmaceutical industry is Dalcolax which is used for constipation. It is prevalent to such an extent that the definition of constipation itself has been changed. Normal elimination which is supposed to happen on a regular daily basis on in the morning as soon as we get up. In the western countries, it, the re regular is once in two days. So, the definitions have been changed off late because general population is everyone is in that mode then the definition itself changes. Urine, we already spoke morning in the yoga class, not able to control the urine or have feeling the urge to urinate but not able to pass urine. Prostate enlargement in men, having to go to urination frequently in the night, depending on catheters to urinate. Sweat, we don't, none of us want to sweat at all. We feel that sweating is something which we shouldn't do. It is not good to sweat. So, we just want to be completely, we think sweating is dirty and we don't want to sweat. Sweat is a method of removing the toxins actually, but we think it is not for us. Reproduction, any animal 
has the urge, the innate urge to reproduce its own, create its own progeny so that its species continues. But reproduction itself has become such a big problem. So we will speak about women's complaints separately. On one side, women are not having their menstrual cycles regularly. On the other side, the sperm counts are dropping day by day in men. All many software people have this complaint in a larger proportion, but it's now percolated into all the professions as well. So, reproduction. So, the basic things, these are what we take for granted on a daily basis, which everyone is supposed to do automatically. But even these have become so difficult for us to do. We have to depend on tablets to do these basic animal instinctively supposed to happen things. We have to depend on tablets or depend on machines, depend on technology for all these things to happen. So we were seeing that this is the state we are in now. And we were looking for an alternative to get out of this state. So we found out that we were doing a few mistakes regarding our food and our exercise. And so we wanted to find an alternative. So we gave a definition to food, what actually food should be. And so we saw what would ideally be the food. So now we will go a little in deep about each millet. Before that, a little about the history of millets. So many people were saying, our ancestors didn't eat this, they were healthy. So how do you say that this is the right food? You have just given a definition, but what is the basis in the history? So when we speak about our ancestors, we are usually referring to hardly two, three generations before us. But human history is not such a short span. We have thousands of years to speak about when we come to human history. So the human body has not changed much from the time human beings started till now. It's not like our technology. iPhone 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 doesn't <coughs> come out. Okay, 9 is not there. Doesn't come out every year in a new form. It takes thousands of years for the human body to evolve into a different form. But the input which we are giving has changed drastically. So when we look into the history, starting right from the religious texts, example the Bible, there are references to millets being used as the daily food. So what is said is Christ and his followers were going from one region to another to preach Christianity, to spread the message of God. They were moving, traveling on a daily basis. So what were they using as their food? What is mentioned is they used to eat those grains which would grow just by absorbing the mist and which would grow within 60 days. This is what is mentioned in the Bible. They used to make porridge from these grains and they used to use unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is unfermented. When we use yeast, it ferments. So there is a process of uh, adding fungus into it. So unleavened bread without this processing bread. So what is the grain which can grow within 60 days just by absorbing the mist? Is rice and wheat, will it grow in this way? Not impossible. So without standing water, we cannot grow rice and wheat. So what was being referred to was brown top millet. Porridge is nothing but what we call ganji in Kannada and Telugu. I don't know. Hindi, what is it called? Ganji? Ganji only. Okay. So brown top millet was being used to make porridge and unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is like our roti fat roti was being used by Christ and his followers when they were on the mission to spread their religion. Coming to our Hindu scriptures. 
so we'll go a little in detail about those stories just because they're interesting so uh, hiranyaksha i think yeah was rakshas who took the earth kidnapped the earth and took her away so all the people approached vishnu lord vishnu saying save the mother earth hiranyaksha has kidnapped her so that is when lord vishnu took the form of varaha swami varaha swami is a boar with tusks so he goes and fights with the rakshas and after a long battle he saves the earth and he brings her back and places her in in her position he carries her on the tusks on her tusks he brings her back and keeps her there so that time everyone wants to thank lord vishnu and they say how can we uh, repay you for what you have done for saving our motherland so what he says is give me paisam made from foxtail millet this will be do make that as naivedyam prasad for me and this will be the way you will pay my will repay my debt so there are references to to millets like this in our scriptures as well another story so brugu maharshi he was one of the sages so all the sages were sitting together and they were unable to decide whom to pray to there is shiva there is brahma there is uh, vishnu so one was saying vishnu is great we will all pray to vishnu another one was saying no no shiva is great we will pray to shiva another was saying brahma is the creator he is the first one so we will pray him so there was a conflict amongst all the rishis so that time brugu was given the role to go and find out who is the leader who is the best amongst all these and when they said they agreed that whatever his conclusion will be will be followed by everyone so he set off uh, to first he went to brahma to say okay to see he he was uh, considered his son so he wanted to say that okay my father is the best so when he went there he found that brahma first came he was very happy to see his son but then he does not greet him like a uh, with respect brugu does not greet him so he gets angry and he scolds him so that time brugu thinks okay my father is still in a state where he is going through these emotions of bad emotions like anger and these things so i cannot accept that he is the greatest so next he goes to shiva so when he goes to shiva what happens shiva comes to embrace him but then brugu says no no you stay away from me you live in the smashan smashan you live there and you have all viputi on your body i don't want to touch you if you touch me i will become impure so that time shiva gets very angry and throws him out of his kailash so he says okay shiva is also disqualified if he is getting angry he is also disqualified so next he goes to vishnu when he goes to vishnu brugu is already in a heated state and vishnu does not greet him so brugu gets angry and he goes to kick him he kicks his heart region chest region so that time lord vishnu is already aware of what is happening and he holds his leg and says my chest is very hard i think your soft feet will be injured if you kick my chest so let me protect your feet so seeing this brugu decides that okay lord vishnu is the best even if i'm kicking him he is protecting me and he declares vishnu is the best but during this process lakshmi is present and has witnessed this scenario so she gets very angry she says that i cannot see someone insulting my husband like this i have to do penance to get rid of the sin which i have done by just seeing this and not preventing it from happening so she leaves heavens and comes down to earth so without lakshmi vishnu is uh, lost he doesn't know what to do he is very sad so he comes to earth to take her back but she says no i am not coming I, until i finish my tapas i am not coming back so in order to get back lakshmi to the heavens vishnu also sits to do tapas so where does he sit to do tapas inside an anthill within the anthill he goes to do tapas 
So he is sitting there and doing tapas for a long time. That time Brahma and Shiva see this and say, okay, we need to do something. Our Lord has gone off on earth, leaving all his duties. And he is starving inside the anthill, just doing penance and not eating anything. So they decide to go and help him by taking the form of a cow. So they take the form of a cow and come daily and they are giving milk inside the anthill and Lord Vishnu is drinking the milk to keep him alive. So this is how the story goes. But then the cow herd who owned this cow is getting, once he, he is seeing that every day there is no milk coming from this cow. So that time one day he decides to keep an eye on it and when they go grazing he sees this process happening that the anthill is give, uh, the cow is giving all its milk into the anthill. So he gets angry and he comes with an axe to kill the cow. When this is happening, Lord Vishnu who was inside the anthill doing penance just comes out and protects the cow. He knows it is Shiva and Shiva has come to help him. He can't let the cow take the blow. So he comes in between and he gets hurt on the hit on the head with the axe. So when this has happened, he is severely injured. But then the cowherd realizes that the cow was Shiva and he asks for forgiveness. He is forgiven. But then Lord Vishnu is in a seriously injured state. So that time one of his friends takes him to Bakula Devi. So Bakula Devi is another incarnation of Yashoda. Yashoda and Krishna, everyone knows how uh, when we say mother's love, it is uh, the incarnation of mother's love is Yashoda. So Yashoda and Krishna were such uh, mother child, they are the ideal example of it. But their relation was short lived because Krishna had to go out and he had to kill the Rakshas and all his other things were there. So Yashoda in her previous life said, I have not been satisfied with this relationship. So that time Krishna says, in your next Janam, you will again have the chance to be my mother. So this form of Bakula Devi, Yashoda's next reincarnation is supposed to be Bakula Devi. And she now offers to take care of Lord uh, Vishnu who is injured. So why are we telling all this long story is, at this point Bakula Devi, when she is uh, trying to get him recovered as soon as possible, Lord Vishnu, she uses little millet. She makes food from little millet, it is mentioned in the scriptures and gives it to Lord Vishnu for a speedy recovery. His uh, skull would have got fractured. So she uses a few uh, herbs to make a pack and she gives him internally little millet which is going to help in speedy recovery and uh, healing of the fracture and all the wounds. So such anecdotes we can find in all our scriptures. And a major problem which we have now is when we read rice, we assume that it is the white rice which we are eating. But all these millets are actually rice, different forms of rice. So it is Sava rice, it is Kodo rice. So rice does not, is not equivalent to the white rice which we eat. Reference to rice in our scriptures can be all these as well. Yes, yes, this is the reason. Correct, that is true. Even uh, I think Ekadashi little millet is what is used in for fasting. So such references are there throughout our scriptures. Not just in India, the Bible it's there means it is prevent, present, even prevalent even in other parts of the world. Even uh, another example is earlier sculptures were the form of education. So most common people would come to the temples to worship God and seeing the sculptures in the temples, they would educate themselves. So sculptures were a medium of communicating and educating the people in the olden days. 
So there are a few uh, temples in Karnataka, Belur Halebed we call them, which are very famous, world famous for their sculptures. The intricacy of the sculptures are very prominent there. So there when we see the food which is depicted in those, you can see it on Google as well. You see the grains which are present in the hands of the sculptures, they are called Shila Balikas are all like this, round in shape. Which shape do we find rice and wheat? They are elliptical. So even in the sculptures, when food had to be depicted, it was depicted in the form of round grains, which are nothing but our millets. The neutral grains and the positive grains, all of them are round in shape. None of them are elliptical. So even there we can see that the food which was used on a common general day to day basis used to be the millets. Rice and wheat were used occasionally as a special food but not 365 days a year, 3 times a day as the main staple food. Okay. We will pass the millets for everyone to see. Is it okay if we completely use only a millet diet? Will it provide us with all the required nutrients is a common question which comes up, a common doubt which comes up in people who are starting the process, the journey towards millets. So when we see the individual properties of each millet, we find out that when all of them are put together, they are going to give cleansing action. We define food that it should also be able to cleanse the body. So all these put together are going to cleanse each and every part of your body. So we will see about each one in a little depth starting with foxtail millet. Another name of foxtail millet is Italian millet. So many people have the doubt of what about the rest of the world. India, okay, we agreed it was there in the Puranas, it was there in our scriptures. What about the rest of the Italian millet, the name itself says that it was widely prevalent in the European belt, just in the grasslands below the Alps. What was grown was foxtail millet. So how much percent of fiber? 8% of fiber. You can have a look, pass it around. Should be able to identify each millet because each one has its own properties. Pass it around. Let everyone see. So, which color is foxtail millet? Light. Yellowish in color. So, what special properties? Does foxtail millet have? Foxtail millet is good for cleansing the nerves and the joints. So all nerve related problems starting from when kids are having bedwetting, 5, 6, 7, 8 year old children still don't have bladder control. When they sleep in bed, they pass urine. It seems like a small problem, but for the parents and for the child, it is a very big problem. They are unable to go out and stay anywhere else. They have to come back home. And the confidence of the child reduces when they are having the problem of bedwetting. So for bedwetting is happening because the myelination of the nerves has not occurred properly which are have give, supposed to give bladder control. So for that problem foxtail is good. Convulsions, febrile convulsions, parents are scared if the temperature crosses 101, 102 when the child has fever there are all possibilities that the child will have a attack of convulsions. Fits, mentally retarded children where the brain development itself has not happened properly. 
then old age problems like tremors parkinsons alzheimers where the person is losing the memory all such nerve related issues diabetic neuropathy because of high levels of sugar you have burning in the feet when you are walking you don't feel that you are walking on the solid ground you feel that you are walking in the air or that there is some cotton constant burning of the soles all these are signs of diabetic neuropathy so for all nerve related problems foxtail millet is very good and also joint related problems rheumatic problems so people having joint pains constantly early morning when they get up they are not able to move properly or osteoarthritis of the knee all such problems foxtail millet is very good i think foxtail millet is called kutki right in hindi it's called kutki tamil word called foxtail foxtail tenai i think tenai yeah i think kodo is kutki no no kodo is kodo kodo the name itself is derived from the hindi word kodo kodra or kodo okay yeah yes so kodo millet also called the himalayan millet so the name itself is suggesting it is widely even today the tribal people in chatisgarh jharkhand region are eating kodo chawal it's called kodo chawal as their staple food that is how we were able to bring it back to a great extent the seeds were present because these people are still holding on tightly to it as their basic food so kodo millet or the himalayan millet it is reddish pink in color it has 9% of fiber so what special property does kodo have it is a blood purifier so all blood related problems starting from high cholesterol levels hyperlipidemia kodo is good people having heart blocks heart blocks are happening because of excess cholesterol so kodo millet is good for them people having kidney problems what is the kidney supposed to do remove the toxins which are present in the blood so if kidney is not functioning toxic metabolites accumulate in the blood creatinine levels go up so the blood is what is affected in that so kodo millet is good for them people having low hemoglobin not able to maintain normal levels of hemoglobin kodo millet dengue what happens in dengue the platelets level fall there is a problem of excessive bleeding for such patients kodo millet is good fevers where the infection is spreading in the blood there also kodo millet is good immunity related problems so where is the immune system actively working in our body it is in the blood the wbc which is there in the blood where is the blood cells formed in the bone marrow so kodo millet not just purifies the blood it also has the capacity of cleansing the bone marrow where the blood cells are produced it is so powerful that there are cases where people have consumed pesticide in order to commit suicide and have neither dead are not come back to a normal conscious state so this happened in mysore hospital in the emergency ward 
one of the first we call Kodo as Arka in Canada. So go bring that and give it to your son who has attempted to commit suicide, he is unconscious. So give this to him and there are some chances of him surviving. They had done, made him vomit and removed the poison which was not absorbed. But already the, what was absorbed had reached the blood and was having its effects. So they made gan, uh, ganji porridge from kodo millet and gave it to him through the tube when he was unconscious. By the end of one week, he gained consciousness and became normal. So, even that kind of toxins which are there in poisons, Kodo is able to clear from your blood. That is the power which it has. So, all blood related problems. Allergies. So, most of us think allergy is related to the skin or to the respiratory system. But allergies, what is an allergy? Uh, the body is supposed to react to a foreign body to some extent. So, if there is dust, we are supposed to sneeze. So, some reaction to reduce the toxic effect of that bite. But then, if our body is hyper reacting, over reacting to a stimulus, then we call it an allergy. So, where are these immune cells which are over reacting present in our blood. So, people with urticaria, asthma, excessive people are suggested to use more of kodo millet. Okay. So, Kodo millet is also called Arka. So, what is Arka? Arka in Sanskrit is the name of the sun. So, what happens in the Himalayan regions, the lower mountainous regions, it is covered by snow for some part of the year. But then, when the sun rays fall and the snow starts to melt, grass starts to grow. This is nothing but the Kodo millet grass. So, they gave it the name of the sun because as soon as the sun rays hit the earth and the snow melts, it starts to grow. That's why it was given the name directly of the sun. It's called Arka in Kannada. That, that is the name used. Kodo is the usual name, but in Sanskrit it is Arka. Okay, so next moving on to barnyard millet, also called the Japanese millet. Someone was asking, how do people in Japan seem to have the longest lifespans? A few generations back, even they were using millets, that is Japanese millet or barnyard millet. So, it has 10 percent of fiber and it is creamish in color, creamish or off white. Slightly difficult to differentiate between barnyard millet and little millet. Very similar in nature when after you make it into rice it is difficult. But when you see the seeds, they are quite different in nature. So, barnyard millet, what is it good for? Liver and bladder related issues. So, typhoid usually affects the liver. Jaundice, hepatitis affecting the liver. For all these problems, barnyard is good for alcoholics who have consumed too much alcohol and damaged their liver. Liver cirrhosis is happening. For such patients, we suggest more of barnyard millet.
Can I erase? brown top millet or the American millet. Throughout the American continent, it used to grow abundantly in the grasslands. Even today it is present. Even today it is present and it is sold as cow feed. Brown top millet is present abundantly in America and they are using it as cow feed, selling it with a label unfit for human consumption. But it is the highest fiber containing millet which has properties of, it has all the properties of foxtail millet that is it is good for the nerves and the joints and additionally it is good for the GIT the entire gut starting from the mouth to the rectum, people having constipation, having piles, fissures, fistula, all rectum related issues, indigestion, vomiting, brown top, millet, also good for the skin and the main region, reason why it has become most in demand is its anti-cancerous properties. Brown top millet or the American millet, it is greenish in color. It is called brown top millet because the seed, when you see it, it is in the shape of a top. Kids play with. One side is a little pointed and round on the top. So it's called brown top millet. Greenish in color. Past it. Yeah. little millet or the African millet, 10% of fiber. So why did I keep little millet for the end? Though it, I was going in order 8, 9, 10, 10, then again I came back to 10. One thing it is my favorite millet, no doubt it is the softest and my favorite to eat. Also called the African millet, even today in the desert lands of Africa where it has been uh, the progress economically is not so much that rice and wheat have not yet percolated into their systems as a staple food and the areas are so dry that they cannot grow rice and wheat those people many of them are still using little millet as their main staple food it's also called the African millet So why I kept it to the end is, it has cleansing properties of the reproductive organs. So it is not only ensuring your health by using little millet in the period prior to conception and during your pregnancy, you are ensuring that the next generation is also healthy. This is the power of little millet. It will cleanse the ovaries and the testes where the seeds for the next generation, the cells for the next generation are being 
produced. So that is how powerful it is. It has the capacity to cleanse those regions itself. So all hormone imbalance related problems. Thyroid is a hormone imbalance, hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. For them we suggest little millet. It is also creamish in color, creamish of white in color. So till now we spoke about the different cleansing properties. So if you have observed, you would have heard me say, we suggest more of codomillet for kidney patients. We suggest more of little millet for patients having thyroid. I didn't say we suggest only little millet. So why is this? It is not sufficient if we cleanse only one part. So whichever part is diseased, you have a problem with that part, consume more of the specific millet. Suppose you are having thyroid problem or PCOD problem or low sperm count, then three days a week you can have little millet. But the other organs of your body also have to be cleansed on a regular basis. So one day each of the other millets. So this is how we need to divide. Never leave out anything or say I said little millet is my favorite. So if I say it's my favorite, I cannot just eat every day 365 days little millet. My blood also needs to get purified. My nerves also need to be purified. So you always have to have a balance. Variety is the key point here. So God has created a lot of variety. Be it in grains, be it in pulses, be it in vegetables, be it in green leafy vegetables, be it in fruits. We are restricting ourselves by eating 1, 2, 3, 4, that's all. There are so many more in number. So reach out to all of them. Many people used to say, if we come to you, we have to follow a very strict regimen and diet, Patyam Chayali, that is what they used to say. But then we are saying, actually that is wrong. What are you doing? You are eating only rice, wheat, rice, wheat. You are following a strict diet. We are asking you to leave those two and eat so many more which are present. If you are healthy, you have these 5 grains plus you have the neutral grains, 5 more. So almost 10 millets, 10 millets which you can eat on a daily basis. So we are giving you more options. We are not restricting you. You have restricted yourself. Same case in vegetables and fruits. We have hardly 2, 3, 4 in our spectrum and we are repeating to use them. Actually, if we make a list, we can we have enough vegetables available that we don't repeat it more, not even more than once a month. It, it will not get repeated. There is so much variety. So the more variety you eat, the healthier you will be. Be it in millets, be it in vegetables, fruits and even pulses. So we usually stick to tur dal. Only tur dal, tur dal, tur dal. Every sambar, rasam, dal, tur dal. But there are so many more. So eat all of them. Keep a cycle of rotation of all. Even kashayam. So today we had, now we had bilva as our kashayam. Morning we had tulsi. Yesterday we had the grass, garika. So each one has its own special healing property. So don't restrict yourself to one or two. All of us are stuck with coffee, tea. Coffee, tea. The whole world is drinking only these two beverages. But there are so many more good medicinal herbs which we can take. So open the window and have you have a wide variety to choose from. Disease specific few are there. You can use the, those more in proportion but don't limit yourself is what we are trying to say. Another next question comes okay all of them are good. What if I mix all of them make atta and use it together or Mix all of them, make rice and use it together. So each day you need certain amount of quantity which is consumed in order for that cleansing action to happen. So your blood has to get purified, 
you need one meal full of kodo millet to do that action. So if you are taking a little kodo, if you are mixing everything, there is little kodo, little, little millet, little barnyard, little brown top, none of the organs are going to get cleansed properly. So what do we say? Never mix. Each meal separate, each day, we say actually two days. If you have no problem, no disease, two days once keep having a different millet. So the two days, breakfast, lunch, dinner have the same millet. That is the ideal way to use it. Okay. So next we come to the question of what to cook in the millets. So we have come to a state where we have forgotten them so much that we don't know how to cook with them. But simple thing is all our recipes which have been handed over from generations earlier used to be made with the millets. So there is nothing very different about it. The only important thing is you need to soak them. We have forgotten the element of soaking in our cooking today. We are all in a fast forward life running not having time to do anything. So white rice, there is no fiber in it. So you just keep it in the cooker, 3 CT, it will be ready. Wheat, you just uh, make chapati and put it on the tawa, it is ready. But these grains have a, you, we have already seen, 40 times more fiber. So in order for it to cook well, for you to be able to digest it well, you need to soak it. And how is the fiber present is important. So in rice and wheat, the fiber is mainly present in the outer layer only. So once this is polished, the fiber is gone. But the thing, beauty about millets is the fiber is present in concentric circles from the center to the periphery. So the fiber is there within as well. So if we soak it just for 10-15 minutes or half an hour, only the outer fiber has been soaked. And the inner fiber is not yet soaked and so when you eat it, you feel it is okay. But after going inside the body, people complain of complaints like heat, heat inside the body being generated when they eat millets. This happens if you have not soaked it properly. So if you soak the millets, we suggest 4 to 8 hours of soaking. Minimum of 4 hours up to 8 hours of pre-soaking before cooking the millet. So when you do this, the innermost fiber as well has been soaked. The water has reached the innermost layers of the fiber and when this happens, it cooks very quickly, does not take long to cook and it is digested very easily inside the body. It does not go and absorb water. Why is heat produced if you do not soak? After going inside the body, it is pulling all the water. So your body has dryness and heat. But if you have soaked it well, it goes in and releases the water and it has a cooling effect on the body. Okay. So someone asked, is there any specific season we should eat millets in? That is only if you are not soaking them. But if you are soaking them, we suggest all the seasons you must soak for it to be all the medicinal properties to be fully felt by you, you need to soak it well. So what we do for recipes where atta has to be made, soak, dry and then make the atta so that it is easily ready. Uh, again, when you are preparing, 15 to 30 minutes of soaking is sufficient. You don't have to wait for 4 to 8 hours after making the atta for it to soak. So, and it is very convenient as well. As, as soon as you want it, it, you will be able to make it if you have pre-soaked, sun-dried it well and then made the atta. So, I think roti is one thing which all North Indians have as their staple food and making roti with this flour has become like a big question mark and we think it's not possible. But I think that one thing we will arrange for a demo of how to make roti with the millets. Everything else is the same. You soak and make it into, adapt it into any other recipe. It can be made. Khichdi. I think Maharashtrians eat talipit. Talipit is a Maharashtrian food, I think. That is very well adapted, especially foxtail millet. Soft idli dosas you want. It is nice with barnyard millet and little millet. The softness is marked. You want 
क्रिस्प पेपरी मसाल डोसा टाइप ऑफ डोसा फॉक्स टेल में लेट इज गुड सो सर्टन रेसिपी सर्टन ग्रेन आर मोर एडेप्टेबल टू इट बट इन ऑल यू कैन मेक एवरीथिंग सो अबाउट कुकिंग आई डोंट थिंक एनी स्पेशल ट्रेनिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड योर सेम रेसिपी जस्ट रिप्लेस इट विद दिस बट द ओनली डिफरेंस इज यू नीड टू सोक वेल arises is how do we know the purity of the millets which we are getting polished and unpolished millets what is the difference so first the major drawback when we are using polished millets is that we are giving rise to chances for adulteration because the demand has become more for millets and the produce is still not meeting the demand the rate of the millets has raised exponentially and because of this there are middlemen who are doing a lot of adulteration so rice ration is available at 1 rupee 2 rupees in the states at the ration uh, outlets so this rice white rice they are making it into smaller pieces and mixing um, almost 50 to 60% and selling it as millet so one that is the major drawback that you will think that you are eating millet but actually you are eating white rice which has been powdered mixed in the millet this is one major problem so a solution to that we cannot say okay this company is good this brand is good this retailer is good always buy from him you have to be able to identify which is the right millet so as i already said if it is polished it all of them have become white so that is an easy thing if it is white say i don't want it you have to ask for millets which have their own color we just saw each one has their own color so ensure that they have their own color next important thing is they have a dot so this dot will be present in the grain so this will help you identify if it is rice which has been broken this dot will not be present so an easy way to see that is put the sample on a dark surface take a photo with your smartphone and zoom in and see you will easily be able to see the difference i will share pictures on the group of adulterated and pure so that you can make out the difference when you see it on your more than the naked eye when you take a picture and zoom in and see it is very clearly evident so this is just one reason another major reason why we need to avoid polished millets and opt for unpolished millets is that the outer fiber which is there which is retained only if you don't polish it is rich in lignans so what are lignans anyone from the chemistry side here chemistry background no one so this is a phenol ring so carbon has four places where it can attach itself to different uh, in a different ways it can attach it has four so here one carbon is attached to hydrogen one another bond single bond with carbon and here two with this carbon 
so i'm going deep into the issue because of uh, this is a very important thing especially for related to cancer so we had uh, someone who, i don't see her here okay no no not you the dietitian for cancer related so okay so this is basically in the depth for uh, cancer related important for everyone but very essential for relating to cancer so lignans are this is a basic phenol structure and lignans are polymers of this many phenol units combined the polyphenolic compound are called lignans so what do these lignans do is because of this presence of this kind of structure in a circle they have the capacity to absorb free electrons so what do these free electrons do electrons if they are free they are very unstable they have a tendency to form free radicals so today morning we saw the process of respiration where glucose was burnt with oxygen to release energy which is our life energy so this we wrote in the form of a simple reaction but there are several steps involved in it which include uh krebs cycle where the electron transfer happens in ultimately to release atp energy so this electron movement is what is going to happen at a biochemical level at a when you go to a molecular level for atp or energy to be produced so this metabolic processes tend to create free electrons which will form free radicals which are causing cell damage so what can free radicals do they can either damage the cell they can cause cell death destruction of the cell or they can initiate the process of cancer so what is cancer basically each cell in our body has a control a regulation over multiplication when this control is lost we call it as cancer so one cell is supposed to divide into two cells when required so skin on a daily basis a few cells we are losing so new cells have to regenerate how does that happen one cell becomes two cell but this happens in a controlled manner the control is present in the genetic material and this control prevents it from exploding it just forms two when it is required and this produce four when it gives the signal but when this control is lost which can happen because of free radicals which can happen because of chemicals like our preservatives like the colors like the food additives which we use which can happen because of viruses as well viruses also have the capacity to alter this genetic control and produce unrestricted limited limitless reproduction of these cells so one becomes 2 2 4 6 8 it just multiplies without control and these cells are nonsense cells they do not form have the proper shape form or do not perform the function which they were supposed to do and they just devour all the energy this is basic simple if i have to talk about cancer it would be this so the free electron which is present the free radicals being formed are what are responsible for this happening it can cause cell damage cell death or initiate cancer so this lignans are important because they have the capacity to absorb that extra electron so what happens is the electron which was extra gets absorbed into this ring and keeps rotating the double bonds keep shifting and the electron keeps rotating in chemistry we would have seen even when we draw benzene we instead of putting double bonds which keep moving we have a shortcut and just draw a circle here to indicate the electron which is rotating constantly so lignans this is one phenol unit like this lignans are polyphenolic compounds multiple such compounds so that is why they are very important the outer layer of the millets are rich in lignans 
which in the body have the capacity to absorb this free electron disease which are causing cell death which are causing damage inside the body so we were speaking about the cleansing action that food needs to cleanse so what do we mean by this cleansing action is it has the capacity to absorb this free electron which is being produced at the end of metabolism so this unstable product is being consumed doing electrical some wire has to be adjusted or some bulb we are removing in order to prevent ourselves from getting shock we would use wooden platform so what why would that that prevent shock it absorbs the electron when we are standing on a wooden platform doesn't allow the circuit to get completed so we don't get electrocuted we don't get the shock so what is there in the wood which is absorbing the electron it is lignin which is a next step of lignan a more dense uh, form of lignan is lignin so in our food we have in the millets the outer layers are rich in lignans it's also present in some other sources like flax seeds are known to have be rich in lignans so this lignans is what is going to help you become healthy help you how, how is it anti cancerous many people ask how what is what in uh, millets is going to help you this is the explanation okay there is a lot more in depth about it but this is just the basic so two reasons why we should prefer unpolished millets one to prevent ourselves from eating adulterated rice mixed millets and not get the benefits thinking we are eating millets but actually eating 50 60% rice and two we want the maximum effect by having the lignans present in our food so that they absorb the free radicals which are produced in our body they stabilize the free electrons okay and if you look into lignans they are even responsible for like as we age we have our memory reduces the cognitive ability reduces the capacity to think reduces as we age so this is happening because there is atrophy to some extent in the brain cells but having a lignan rich diet reduces this process so there is a connection even between our thinking and the food which we eat so this is how millets are able to help mentally retarded children this is how they are able to help children with adhd uh, attention deficit hyperactive children so this has become a very major problem not yet so evident in india but in america it is very much prevalent autistic children so everything is normal when you take a report a scan all the body tests everything is normal the brain is normal ct mri everything is normal but the child socially cannot interact you cannot have the child sit in one place for a second they are hyperactive or they sit they are in their own world they are unaware of what is happening around them they do not have social interactions they do not have the capacity to show their emotions or communicate so such a state is very pathetic when we see that everything is normal we cannot do anything like any test or any medicine to help them and yet they are present in the society but almost like an invalid person so it is very sad that the number of such children is increasing day by day and all of it is related to our food what we are eating in the formative process when the mother is pregnant she is not having the right raw materials for the baby to be created in the womb so we are leading into such problems that by birth itself they are not normal so this plays a role millets play a role to help such children as well because of the lignans which are present in it okay think we'll stop here we need to go for walk now so
please again go through all that we have spoken in your mind and then any doubts we can continue tomorrow.